Well, the thing about the two of us is that's how we connect because we're, we're, we're very close in beliefs and things that we share. And so she's also as transparent, direct. You know where she's coming from. There's no in-between. Caring. She, she does care for her, her staff, her students or whatnot. Um, innovative. She's always thinking of trying to figure out other ways to do things that's different from other schools, uh, kind of like me. You know, she's a dynamic person. And she inspires me whether she don't, you know, she know it or not, but she does. She's that type of person that's going to go the extra mile or whatnot. And so she, she's a dynamic person, a dynamic leader. Welcome to the Voices United in Education podcast. Each week, we showcase the teachers, administrators, and community members who go the extra mile to contribute to the success of every student in Escambia County. You'll meet the real people behind the titles and learn about the amazing resources to support every student's success. Work, play, raise a family, succeed, repeat. Is work-life balance a thing when you both have the same job? My next guests are both principals at Escambia County Public Schools on the rise with some of the highest satisfaction surveys. Today, they're going to share their unique perspectives and paths to education and each other. Escambia County's power couple, Dr. Kimberly Thomas and Mr. Derek Thomas. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, ma'am. You are some uncommon lovebirds, I think. I mean, you've been married 19 years. That's pretty uncommon. You are both principals in the same county, also uncommon, and you're both killing it. So here's what I want to know. Who asked who out? Probably me. What was the line? I don't know. I don't remember. Did you ask me out, girl? I knew I had an interest in you. Well, I am cute. I mean, We have a unique story, so we grew up not even, what, two minutes apart from each other? It might be less than that. Yeah, like across the street. Like across the highway. Oh, wow. Literally. Mm -hmm. And we never knew each other in Pritchard. Like, he went to a different high school than I did, so we didn't cross paths. How did you live across from one another but not go to the same high school in Pritchard, Alabama? So he went to the high school across the street from his home, and I went to a high school on the other side of town. She went to the bougie school. She's fancy. I went to a magnet school. (laughs) Thank you. You know. And so... um, he was a freshman when I was, no, I was a freshman when he was a senior. And so we just didn't cross paths, but we met at my dad's house. But the funny thing is our families are very close friends. And I would be at her relative's house. She'd be at my relative's house, but we never saw each other. That's never wild. crossed paths. Yes. Our grandmothers lived across the street from each other growing up. Okay, so what you're saying is you were pre-vetted. Your families, you know, even yes. though they didn't think about to introduce you till later, you were pre-approved. Well, uh, you know, I was approved, of course, because <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, I had to work her in, but we're good. We're good. We're, yeah, good. we're good. And was it your sister that introduced you? Yeah, it's my two sisters. So he stopped by my dad's house, and uh, I was like, hey, who was that guy? And they was like, oh, you don't know Derek? I was like, no, I don't know him. They was telling me that, you know, this is... Gene's nephew, dad's friend, Gene. I was like, Gene Thomas? They was like, yeah. I was like, oh, he's kind of cute. See, and I told then you. That was cute. They kind of <laughs> made it work. Yeah. So when y'all started dating and you're, you know, as lovebirds do, talking about future visions, what's going on, what your plans are, did you both share that you both had a vision for educational leadership? Yes. Yeah. Um. Of course, as a man, you know, I always think different, but like she kind of helped me. I was weird. I wanted to be like a forensic science investigator, FBI. Okay. Jump out the outplaying special ops guy. So the answer would have been no. No, I was not planning my educational leadership future. <laughs> but but leadership. <laughs> oh, I see. You know, I see. Okay. The, the leadership thing. Tactical yes. leadership. There you go. But yes. And so she convinced you to go into education instead? Not really, because I was already in it, but um, seeing the things that she's done and watch her in action, it kind of helped me, inspire me to go do it. She's been an inspiration for me for us in that part and helped push me to go 
to different levels with it. Even in the classroom, when she would do different things, when she was in kindergarten, I taught fourth grade. She was like, you need to do a small group. Like, I don't want to do a small group. But I tried it. Love it. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't do anything different. So. so you exchanged notes early on on what was working and not working. Correct. Yes. And mm-hmm. did you always want to be a principal? Yes. And actually, one day, a superintendent even. I mean, I have. Yeah, yeah I have. I mean, I always knew I wanted to do education. It was a passion of mine. I always wanted to teach. People always saw leadership qualities in me that sometimes I didn't see early on in my career. But I kind of moved quickly just into various aspects, became a literacy reading coach at the time, and then decided I wanted to pursue my education. I just went straight through school. And one of my professors was like, hey, you should consider doing your doctoral degree. And I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> really? She's like, yeah, I think you have what it takes to do it. And I'm thankful that Dr. Pilcher and Dr. Lord convinced me to do that because it's been a great opportunity and has opened many doors for me. Well, you kind of took the macro approach from the beginning, you know, from looking at like the big picture of leadership. You worked with student education, right? So which is all like really big. I call them big because I feel like they're the perspective is big um, of leadership concepts. And how has that impacted your style at C.A. Weiss? Because C.A. Weiss is a unique place. We've covered it a few times here on the show. And so it might require like unique approaches. So I'm just curious if if your macro background informed what you're doing now. Definitely. Um, I was able to just gain different types of leadership styles, you know. From each journey, I've learned something different. And I think it has really helped me cultivate and just be molded and grounded into who I am and how I approach leadership every day. I'm a servant leader at heart. I'm very authentic. I'm very real. You know exactly where I stand at all times, most of the time. Let me confirm with the the (laughs) audience here. Is that correct, sir? That is correct. (laughs) Okay. You get that with with us both. That's great. I love it. Same way at home. Serving leadership, um, authentic, and just it's all about serving the people. And you had more of a micro strategy with your leadership because you were like in it. You were in the trenches and doing the thing. Yes. You were at every, what, every elementary except no, for every middle, middle Just school. Just about every middle. middle. Except for like three. Right. And observing what works and what doesn't. So what's your take on your secret sauce to leadership at Workman? Well, it's a, it's a you know, it's a bunch of things that go together for been in fourth grade at Spencer Bibbs where I started and then going to fifth grade and you can kind of see the dynamics of the youth change um, with their attitudes and the way they think. Then one day I just decided to pursue my master's degree um, in leadership. And so at that point I took on the dean's role at Warrington Middle School. And then I got a chance to see the same students that I taught, you know, at, at, at middle school. And that kind of led me to know that the middle school age needed me the most because in elementary school, you see a lot of, you know, nurturing, loving, kind, a lot of females, you know, not many males that at that time need that tough love. And so I decided to at that point to pursue middle school and everybody think I'm crazy for it. But it's my opinion is middle school is where we lose a lot of our youth and you know, it, it takes a special person, a special group of people to be in their lives and be with them daily so that they know that you actually care for them because they, they change every day. And that helps me to go into work man, and know that you never know. No day is going to be the same. We dealing with middle schools, but you got to have that backbone and that stat, that, you know, that, that stigma to just go in and dive in and work with it. And it just helps me to hopefully that goes off to my staff and my other administrative team that they know, you don't know what you're going to get today, but they know that I'm there with them. They know that I would work the cash register in the cafeteria, how custodian, teacher, dean, whatever it takes to make work and work. That's what I do. And it's starting to move over to my, my staff and my students. You know, when I first got there, they trash would be on the ground. They see me picking it up. Now I see them picking it up. So it moves on. Yeah. By example. Mm-hmm. 
It sounds like the micro works really well in that specific scenario because you said the kids, they seem to be changing day by day. By day and so you have to have an up close look at what's going on to assess what they need. Correct. Yeah. Got to get in their world. And you mentioned your teams and that's something that you have said off mic is really important to you. Can you tell me about Dr. Thomas, your team and how they help you with success at your school? Absolutely. We can't do this work alone. It takes the team, the entire team, the assistant principal. I'm fortunate to have a curriculum coordinator. And being a community school, I have an extra layer of resources and team members that we all work together and we make this happen. But I could not do it without them. They are the glue that just holds everything together. I mean, we're constantly communicating, collaborating. It's just, it's a great thing to see in action. This week, we're going through certification through UWF as a, I'm sorry, through UCF as a part of our community partnership school program. And just to hear the interviews and to kind of sit back and just kind of hear people talk about our school, it's just been very refreshing to know that, wow, you know, I kind of, I'm a piece of this. And that we all work together for a common goal. And that's the ultimate goal are the students. And it's so interesting how different your schools are because, I mean, COIS is different from like all of them, though, to be fair, you know. Right. And you do have the community support, community sponsors, whereas workmen, not so much. Right. Behind the scenes, do you all brainstorm on how to increase community engagement because of your different perspectives? Yes, we do. I'm constantly sharing my resources with him. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> I mean, but it, it's it's hard for us because we don't have that extra support as yeah. like she had with the community school. But my team is, is so awesome that I will present them with an idea and they make it happen. Uh, and they always know when I come into work, I'm like, I was up at 3 a.m. They go, oh, God, well, because I always come up with some kind of weird idea or something. Doesn't sleep. No, my mind is always going and running and I always come up with ideas. They call it crazy ideas, but it works. And it's, so it helps workmen work. And we're just, you know, I wish we could have that support, you know, more from the community. And I'm going to try to do my best to get out um, in the community and try to get more support so that a lot of stuff we do for our staff, sometimes our students, it comes out of our pocket, my APs, myself, and some more of our admin team. But, you know, we, we try to keep that morale and everything going, and that's the only way we can do it. So we do what we have to do to make it work. And that has helped us keep, you know, 85 to 90 percent of our staff. And so, you know, we were planning today, and when I can look at my GMS and say, well, I really don't have an open spot, you know, that's a good problem. Uh, so it's the team approach knowing that they know my expectations, they know what to expect, and the the, the students see that because they see us as a unit, you know, and they know they can't play on us and know, you know, I said this to you, and I said, no. Oh. Are, oh, yeah. So Interesting. Yeah, so the student knows our, our whole approach, and, and, I, and I say to anybody, I got the best team in all the middle schools right now. I'm very competitive. <laughs> Just as We both are. Yeah. <laughs> So what does that look like then at home? Do you all end up talking shop a lot? Oh, absolutely. Everything is a competitive moment. Everything is competitive. It even filters into our children. It's kind of sad. Who has the best satisfaction survey score? I don't know. I don't either. You got the numbers? I don't. That's not something I get to see. What, me? (laughs) I think he might, seriously, this time. Oh, okay. I'll let him have that one. Okay, okay. Okay. (laughs) I'll, I'll let him one up me on that one. Yeah. So, um, since you are the leader in the satisfaction score, we just decided. Um, what do you feel like parents should know about middle school or workman middle school specifically that they don't? What are they misunderstanding? They misunderstanding the things that's in social media. A lot of things that are in social media are before us, um, but they don't know the team approach, the whole family that we have at Workman. The vibe, the culture, the shift that we've had, it's a great place. Uh, we have a new theme of motivation. Uh, it's all around the school. And we actually have, you know, a whole little acronym, everything laid out for it. 
And I tell people, because I know you know everybody, the biggest thing in the district is a lot of people take their students out of middle school and go private and come back for high school. And my thing for that is I just want parents to know that even as a father of a middle school and not going to be had the girl, now the boy's coming. And to see the dynamics of that, not only from us, my own children, from all the rest, it's not about public or private. It's about the, this is my opinion, it's about the parent has to be in tune and tangible throughout their middle school career. And you're going to have to have those hard conversations where it hurt your, stu- hurt your child, your student, and hurt yourself at the same time because, again, they're so confused. They don't know what they want to do, what they want to be, who they want to be. And you have to be right there with them, holding their hand the whole way throughout middle school. So if it's public or private, I mean, that's just what it is. And my opinion, you know, I came up in public middle school, uh, so did my wife. But it's, it's, that, it's that family approach. It's that being hands-on, knowing what's going on in their business. They're going to hate it, but later in life, they'll appreciate it. You know, I'm blessed to have my partner here as, you know, we, we, you know, like I said, we have our own middle school. So, you know, you have those issues and things, but I just want parents to know, give us a chance. Know who we are before you quit to judge us. Not go off those old ratings that you see in the system, but get to know us. Come see us. Come talk to us and come work with us. I want community help. I want hands in hands with the community so that because we're a centralized location and we have a very diverse, very diverse campus. And it goes along with the district theme of, you know, everyone can learn or whatnot. And we, we have that population. We we just want that support from the community. Come on in, work with us and, and see what we do. So a lot of people come in, but like, oh, wow, it's not what I thought. You know, even substitutes, we get subs now. It's like, that's sweet. <laughs> you know. How would you describe your vision for your school? My vision is, and you know, my team has said, and I had to give my secretary props too. She's, she's awesome. So, but my, my vision is I want to be different. You have your, your brown barges, you have your ransoms, you have all these places. Why can't Workman be that place? And to the fact that I'm super competitive, now it's it's over to the kids to when scores come out, they come immediately come up to me. I went up in this. My levels is this. And so that's what I want. And I always tell them, let's go get after these other schools. Why can't you be the best school? And so I want our school to be the best, innovative, thinking outside the box. And my theme was when I got there is when Workman works, the world's going to listen because everybody want to figure out what is Workman? What are they doing? What's going on? And the buzz is starting to get out. So just look out. We, we come. <laughs> oh, we come. We're coming for the big. I love that you've like made it contagious to the students that they are now invested yes. in doing their part to boost the the status of, of the entire school. That's powerful. And that's empowering, too, you know, because a student on the opposite end could just kind of there could be a shrug and just like, oh, well, I go to a, a, a not so great school. But instead, they've taken pride into, no, we're going to elevate our own status by our individual uh, efforts. And, and they'll tell you, you're not motivated today. And so oh, they'll yeah. tell you. Yeah, t- Miss Thomas, you're not motivated today. So that checks me. Oh, so the students come up to you yeah, and they'll, say, they'll Mr. Thomas, I'm, you were not, not motivated, motivated today. today. So, you know, that's. that's wow. Yes, that's that. It's spreading. It is. Yeah, so that's a good thing. That is. That's really interesting. What about you, Dr. Thomas? What's your vision for your school? She's not as good as... (laughs) (laughs) So our biggest thing at at WISE is that we are building leaders. I mean, you hear it all the time. And again, it was interesting to hear today in the student interviews, it came out. You know, we know that we're leaders. We know that this school helps us to build our leadership skills and so that's that's really what we want to do. Um, most of the time, your your problem students or your most difficult students, they have leadership skills. They're just utilizing them the wrong way. So it's our job to help veer and shift that leadership approach to more positive things. And so that's what we've been doing, and that's what we do at Wise is that we're we're building leaders. Military students. We're the only middle school with ROTC. You know, so just just <laughs> leadership. Just, just and we're just the saying. only elementary school with health ambassadors, sir. 
Just because you have all that support from your community schools. Absolutely. You know, that maybe work making it be a community school. All right, school. you too. All, all right. right. <laughs> Uh, you know. All right, sorry. All sorry. right, you remember that game show, The Love Boat? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you remember? Maybe it's not The Love Boat. Maybe it's one of those dating games where mm -hmm. the one answers for the other, and mm -hmm. then you, the other holds up a sign to see what's correct. We're gonna do a little bit of that. Uh, oh, oh boy. boy. Okay, it's just one question. <laughs> You'll survive it, I promise. Okay, so Dr. Thomas, I want you to describe your husband's leadership style. How would you? describe it not how he kind of described it already but from your vantage point how do you describe it transparent very transparent um what's all you got for me servant servant leadership all right come on come on caring although sometimes it may not come across that way he has a hard way of showing it but deep down is very caring and nurturing all right your turn sir what you want me to say? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I would say the same for her. I mean, the, the thing. No, you can't do that. Well, the thing about the two of us is that's how we connect because we're, we're, we're very close in beliefs and things that we share. And so she's also as transparent, direct. You know where she's coming from. There's no in-between. Caring. She, she does care for her, her staff, her students or whatnot. Um innovative. She's always thinking of trying to figure out other ways to do things that's different from other schools, uh, kind of like me. You know, she's a dynamic person and she inspires me whether she don't, you know, she know it or not, but she does. She's that type of person that's going to go the extra mile or whatnot. And so she, she's a dynamic person, dynamic leader. That's awesome. Oh yeah. That's so sweet. Oh, that's right. I'm getting brownie points for later. You are getting brownie points. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this has been really cool. I'm I'm so glad that we could do this. This has been really fun. Understandably, we've not done an episode like this before. It's a first. I'm but sorry. it sounds like both of you are at the front line of firsts, CAYs and workmen, firsts that have happened and firsts that will happen in the future to come. So the only question remains is who will be first between the two of you. So stay tuned. Absolutely. <laughs> Any final words before we sign off? Um, just want to make a plea to the community. You know, whether you've had a bad experience with education or I, I don't know, but don't be afraid to come into the schools and to try to get to understand and assist where you can to the businesses out there. Uh, we need your support, you know. Most of our school dollars are allocated and already earmarked for certain projects and tasks that we can't do, but we would like to do more for teachers and staff and students that we can't always do. So the public support, businesses support, is is much needed right now. It takes all of us and we just wanna do what do our little part is what I always say. I'm just doing just I mean a little part of this to try to make a bigger impact. And that's just what we go into this each and every day, just trying to do our little part because at the end of the day, it's really just, we're just a little piece of the puzzle. Well, I, I want to come from, again, the middle school because that's the loss, you know, I think that's the, that's the loss area in the community and that people are always there for elementary, bringing the cookies and things for the celebrations. You come back for high school. Middle school is where if you look at data, uh, for crimes and different things, you look at the age group. And my plea to the community is let's come together better with this middle school age. Uh, give the public middle schools the opportunity to work with the youth, whether you're on the higher social or on the bottom. Give us a chance. Uh, we're, we're, we're good schools. Mine's is better. But <laughs> we need you. We need that support. We, I, I want my doors flooded with community support. And when the students see the community involved and see their neighbors or see their football coach or see that baseball coach or someone that they interact with in the community, in the school, that means a lot. So Because we see them on the ball park, basketball courts all the time with our students. Right. 
And they, they were like, wow, Dr. Thomas, you're here. I was working a concession stand one time, and one of my students, Dr. Thomas, did you get a new job? Oh. <laughs> like, no, I'm just volunteering. The same so they, with me. Yeah, they like to see right. you. And I'm, dude, I coach. Uh, I got suckered into that by somebody sitting next to me. But <laughs> I, I in, but but now I, ha- I have an opportunity to, a lot of the students that I coach this year will actually be at my school. So it would be interesting to see the dynamics of how that works and how it changed their mindsets of academics and behavior. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. They might see you as a, a real person a little bit more than like a figure that just lives at the school and you're right. not real and I can say and do whatever and Nick, it doesn't no, impact you. No, I can't you. say and do, no. <laughs> Very structured. Well, thank you both. This has been fantastic. Thank you. For thank you, ma'am. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and share. Voices United in Education is a production of Escambia County Public Schools.